This is a 12 pin or trundle lantern pinion that I just made to go with that 72 tooth wheel that I cut in a previous video. Once again I used Robert Porter's The Clock and Watchmaker's Guide to Gear Making to do the math and the lathe setup was taken from W.R. Smith's workshop techniques and a lot of other little things that I picked up from him. So let's go down in the cellar and get started. I've sped the recording up so uh, the uh, sound of the uh, tools uh, may sound a little off to you uh, but that's because of the speed of the video. There's, I'm turning the uh, uh, brass down to the OD that I need. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way down. I, I'm going to oversize everything. Marking off the spaces now for the plunge cut to open up the space between the, uh, this, both the two sides or shrouds of this lantern pinion. Not paying a whole lot of attention uh, to what it looks like. Just make sure that there's enough room for me to get in there and uh, we'll go in and we'll drill all the holes and then once the holes have all been drilled I'll take it upstairs and put it on the watchmaker's lathe and uh, bring it down to size and uh, clean up the inside there before I start putting the trundles in position. Alright that should just about do it there. So we use a center drill we'll start making our center hole here use a twist drill to open it up a little bit and but we want it to be really tight fit in there so we're going to build a three-sided reamer using this uh, six-sided block that I've made into an eight millimeter watchmaker's collet holder. Uh, I use it uh, mostly for indexing things uh, uh, but today what we're going to use it for is to hold some uh, uh, blue pivot steel. There's a, uh, a four-sided one. We use that to make the spade drill. But we'll put in a piece of pivot steel here and uh, the pivot steel is, uh, is made uh, uh, from uh, uh, hardened steel and then tempered to the blue, uh, just like we did in the screw in the earlier one. But let's take that over to the uh, belt sander and uh, start making this reamer. So now we're just coming in from the side. I tap it lightly three times and then turn it twice. Tap it three times, turn it twice. And you don't want to uh, heat up that tip. Um, so you go nice and slow. There you go. That looks pretty good there. Now I use a lot of oil and I slowly peck, peck drill it in there to get all. It's got real makes really fine for and you clear that off. There's no place for it to go. So you got to peck drill it in there until you get it to where you want it to be. Okay, I'm going to part the uh, main part of the uh, uh, lantern pinion body. Uh, from the main stock here and we're going to put to make a stub arbor for it and we'll use a little bit of super glue and uh, we'll glue it onto the super glue and do the rest of our work uh, on uh, the stub arbor to keep everything concentric. So here's a piece of blue steel I'm putting a point on the end so that we can find the end and that's going to be our stub arbor there and uh, that's what we'll glue the uh, lantern pinion to. And there's the stub arbor with the lantern pinion bobbin on there. We're putting it into a collet that runs dead true. And now we'll line up the uh, uh, vertical slide so that we can drill. We'll get it dead on center here. Use a piece of white paper to make sure I'm seeing the center. Take a little bit of time and get it in there pretty good. And then we're doing our indexing with this indexing plate that I made uh, previously. And that's how we'll do all our indexing. And for our drill bits, let's take a look at the drill bits. These are uh, uh, pivot drills that are normally used, uh, but lately I've gotten uh, very fond of these PCB drills. They're carbide, so they don't bend. If they bend, they break. Uh, so they're very good. I use them to make printed circuit boards. I centered the drill bit, and then I moved it over to the pitch radius. And now we're just going to drill through the front shroud only, not the back shroud, just the front shroud. And then uh, when we're done doing that, we're going to take some more of that blue steel and we'll make a pivot drill out of it. And uh, we'll use that to open these holes up to their proper size and then to go into the back shroud and uh, drill a hole, not all the way through it, but down into it so that the trundles, when they're in there, they can be uh, glued into place and we'll use the belt sander and uh, to make it we'll make a spade drill 
We'll make it look like a screwdriver and then flip it over on its side and put a 60 degree uh, included angle on the tip with a little bit of a cutting edge on it. And that's what we'll do now. Okay, we're at the belt sander now. We're creating a screwdriver tip on the end there. And once we get that in there, we're going to drop the table down 10 degrees. We've dropped the table down to 10 degrees. We've got a grinding stone up there. And now we're looking at the face of the screwdriver tip and we're slowly dragging it across our grinding stone to create a 60 degree included angle. So I'm holding it at 30 degrees. The table is at 10 so now we're creating a, a relief to that 60 degree included angle or the cutting edge of our drill bit of what we're doing. And we want to make sure that the point of that drill bit is at dead center. So a few swipes at each time and then go back and finish it up. The spade drill bit was reaming the, f the hole that we made on the front, but then we're making a slight uh, drilling, a slight hole on the back side so that the trundle fits into the back without going all the way through it. So you see I'm getting in there and I'm peck drilling in the back there and clearing away all the uh, swarf really quick. It gets this really fine swarf. You want to make sure you get that all out of there uh, so that you get nice clean holes. And it takes a while, but you get it all done. That's a piece of blue pivot steel, and I'm using 800 grit paper to take the blue off of the uh, pivot steel. And uh, then I'll polish it up with 1500 and use those to make the trundles. And I'll just stick it into the lantern pinion like that, and uh, then I just nick them with the uh, uh, Dremel tool, and uh, because they're hardened, they break rather easy. And of course, this one's being a little difficult, so let me give that another shot. Let me give it another shot. There we go. And yeah, now it's breaking right off of there. Well, the next step was not caught on the camera, but I removed the newly cut pins one by one, then applied a drop of Loctite 609 to the holes on the front and back shrouds, and then carefully placed the pins in place. And uh, that's what it came out looking like. Uh, we don't have to worry about the top too much because we're going to grind that off. But the inside, we want to get in there and clean that all up. Uh, so I'm uh, going to use a, uh, a little uh, toothbrush here and uh, some uh, uh, lighter fluid and uh, clean it up nice and get as clean as I can. Uh, it dries like a plastic, so you want to make sure you get it all out of there. And if not, go in there with a dental tool and take out any remaining parts uh, the next day. But I'll let it all uh, dry for 24 hours, and uh, then we'll take it downstairs and uh, uh, grind the trundles down. Okay, the trundles are all uh, down to the face of the shroud, and now I've got it on a piece of glass with some sandpaper, and I'm going to start sanding it, and uh, we'll get it all the way up to about 1500. We'll do the final sanding when the clock's getting done. But there you go, there's the uh, end result, and I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you the next time when I'm uh, working on the escape wheels for this clock. Thanks for watching.